what is up guys welcome back to the channel and welcome to today's prediction video for this one we will be looking at a huge english premier league clash taking place this weekend on sunday the 12th of may as manchester united host arsenal at old trafford now the last time united and the gunners went head to head was at the emirates on the 3rd of september Arsenal still very much in the title race, United feeling hopeful and very optimistic about qualifying for the Champions League for next season, but struggling kind of in the Champions League group stages of this season. But it was the away side, Manchester United, who opened the scoring in the 27th minute after Marcus Rashford is played in behind the defence, the cuts in from the left wing and just curls the ball past the keeper to make it 1-0. But United couldn't even hold on to the lead for a single minute because in the 28th minute Martin Odegaard arriving late in Manchester United's box after a ball is played in from the left wing and he just slots it past the keeper to make it 1-1. And the match kind of stayed that way right through Alejandro Garnacho actually scoring a goal for Manchester United that was disallowed late in the second half and it looked certain to end that way with a 1-1 draw on the cards. But way, way into injury time, six minutes there in actually, Declan Rice finds himself with some space after a corner is played into Manchester United's box. He controls it well and then just powers it past the keeper. And Manchester United overextended themselves, still in injury time trying to find their equaliser and they were caught again on the break five minutes later as Gabriel Jesus just finds himself with acres of space slotting it past the keeper to make it 3-1 to Arsenal. And that was exactly how the match ended. Manchester United feeling as though they really threw it away after having led initially in the first half. But for Arsenal, completely contrasting emotions, jubilant, excited, knowing that this is what it takes to be champions. And they prove that they have the grit and the determination to come out with some silverware this season. We start off our team analysis with the home side here, Manchester United. The last five fixtures for the Red Devils have ended in two wins, two draws and a single loss. Their last match was a 4-0 loss against Crystal Palace at Selhurst Park earlier this week. In these last five fixtures, Manchester United have scored 10 but conceded 12. So they're really shipping it in at the back right now. Manchester United have far too many injuries coming into this one and it will definitely affect their squad selection. But I think we need to keep an eye on Rasmus Hoyland with his 14 goals and 2 assists. Hoyland still seems to be the number 9 of choice at Manchester United. Is still a player who seems to be struggling to find himself. He's just really struggling to gel with his team right now, I feel. There's too many moves I see Manchester United making in the attacking third that leave Hoyland isolated. And they really need to find a way to gel with him and to bring him into their game plan more often. Next up, I want to talk Alejandro Ganacho with 9 goals and 5 assists. Ganacho has shown that there are certain points in the match where he can just come alive. He can take defenses on on his own. He's got that kind of swagger that you had seen in a young Cristiano Ronaldo. But he seems to be struggling with consistency. He's not getting in these great performances week in, week out. Whether that is down to tactics or him perhaps not being as good as he seems on certain days... I think will be shown to us as time goes by, but Garnacho will definitely be somebody to watch here. And finally, I want to talk so far on Amrabat. Now, Amrabat has no goals and no assists this season. Amrabat was brought in to solidify the midfield to just give them a bit of control day in, and he has failed miserably in that task. In the Manchester derby against Man City, Amrabat actually made a mistake that led to City scoring a crucial goal against United. So he needs to come back, he needs to be more composed. I don't think we'll see him at Old Trafford next season. But in these final few fixtures, Amrabat really, really needs to prove his salt so that perhaps he can get a better move to a different team next season. Okay, next up we look at Arsenal. Now the last five fixtures for the Gunners have ended in four wins and one loss. Their last match was a 3-0 demolition job against Bournemouth at the Emirates. In their last five fixtures, Arsenal have scored 13 goals and conceded just three. The standout player 
at the Emirates right now has got to be Bukayo Saka. 20 goals, 14 assists. Such a dangerous player to deal with. So dynamic, so quick, so tricky. I think he's come under a little bit of criticism in recent weeks for perhaps feigning injuries. But I think that's part of his, of his game plan. To just be able to draw fouls from the opposition. Maybe milk it a little to win dead ball opportunities. But as long as it works for Arsenal, I don't think any of their fans will be complaining. Next up, I want to talk Martin Odegaard with 11 goals and 9 assists. Odegaard has struck up some fantastic chemistry with Bokayo Saka. Where Saka gives them so much danger out wide, it's Odegaard pulling the strings centrally in midfield. He's the kind of player who can get goals, get assists. He knows how to time his runs in the same way he did in the reverse fixture at the Emirates here. Where he just came in late into the box and was able to side foot the ball past the keeper through all of the bodies. Odegaard is not a power player, he's definitely a technique player. So expect silky moves, expect tricky twists and turns from him, a shimmy of the hips here and there, a drop of the shoulder, but expect him to sort of be the marionette who just tries to control Manchester United's entire back line. And next up, I want to talk Saliba with two goals and one assist. Saliba is one of Arsenal's standout players this season for his defensive duties. Now, as a centre-back, Getting goals is great, most of those obviously coming from set pieces, but it is Saliba's composure at the back that I must stress here. Arsenal have looked very stubborn at the back, not giving away goals unnecessarily, and that is down to Saliba. His leadership, his composure at the back has proven to be invaluable to this Arsenal side, and what it does is it allows the players in front of him to play with more freedom and fluidity because they know that they have a reliable centre-back behind them who will be able to deal with any loose balls and also deal with opposition counter-attacks, but can also recycle the ball when it's necessary. Okay, on to the head-to-head -head and the S3M2 verdict. Now, the last five fixtures between Manchester United and Arsenal have resulted in two wins for Manchester United and three wins for Arsenal. No draws. Manchester United have scored 9 goals in these last 5 fixtures while Arsenal have scored 10. Curiously, United have scored in all of these last 5 fixtures while Arsenal have drawn a blank year and there. When we look at the league table, Manchester United are sitting on 8th spot with 54 points while the Gunners are leading the table with 83 points. However, they have played 1 game more than Manchester City. Arsenal have been very stubborn at the back, they've only conceded one goal against Bayern Munich, that was in their loss, and then they conceded two against Tottenham Hotspur, but they were able to grind it out and win that match 3-2. They've been very tight at the back, very stingy in terms of giving goals away, and I think that gives them so much confidence, so much of a boost coming into this one. United, on the other hand, have been dreadful at the back. Not a single clean sheet in their last five, Shipping 4 against Crystal Palace, shipping 3 against Coventry, having to win their FA Cup semi-final on penalties. Manchester United look very, very fragile right now. United do get goals, but they ship in so many at the back that teams have decided to adopt a new mentality when facing the Red Devils. One that says, even if we concede 1, even if we concede 2, we continue pushing because mentally United are not strong enough, they're not stable enough to be able to see these wins over the finish line. They end up conceding many, many goals late, late into the game that throws away points that they desperately need right now. Arsenal are still very much in the title race. They're chasing Manchester City down right down to the wire while United have had their hopes of finishing in the top four just dashed. At this point, the best they can do is finish in a Europa League spot, but those spots seem to be slipping further and further away from them with each match day. United just have let themselves down in many, many ways. Players have just suffered from a lack of chemistry, a lack of composure, and there's disunity in the squad to the point where even if players are discussing tactics perhaps, immediately the first thought comes to them discussing their discontentment with the coach. In terms of injuries, Manchester United can blame all of their injuries for their poor results this season, but I think it's just not enough. 
they've lacked in so many departments and yes, they missed out on key players with Hoyland being off form and being injured for periods. Now they have no Bruno Fernandes coming into this one. They'll be missing Rafael Varane and Scott McTominay and Victor Lindelof as well. Luke Shaw as well is still out injured. Casemiro struggling with form means that Manchester United right now are very much a wounded animal. But it's not the kind of animal that will be looking to lash out at the first opportunity. This is the kind of animal that will be taken advantage of by an Arsenal squad that is looking as though they are at full strength, they are firing on all cylinders and they are ready to take this title race right down to the wire. The only solace that Manchester United have right now is while Arsenal are in a title race with Manchester City for the Premier League, United face the citizens at the end of the month in the FA Cup final at Wembley. But as it stands right now, United don't look like they have much hope of even posing a threat to Manchester City. Arsenal on the other hand look like if they can just continue seeing out their matches and getting maximum points, they can mount some serious pressure on City to the extent where a single slip up could decide where the title goes at the end of the season. I think for Manchester United right now, knowing that they started the season off with so much promise, actually thinking that they could be part of the title race, and then to just see it all crumble in front of their faces week in and week out must be so demoralizing. I think despite the fact that Arsenal have not managed to defeat United in their one fixture at Old Trafford in their last five, I think Arsenal still have the psychological advantage coming into this one. I think Arsenal do win this fixture. I think United end up going too far forward, committing too many numbers in terms of getting attacking moves going, and Arsenal hit them so quickly on the counter-attack with players like Odegaard, like Gabriel Jesus, like Bukayo Saka. You couple that with the additional options that Mikel Arteta has on the bench in players like Eddie Nketiah and Trossard, and I think United end up being overwhelmed here. I think if United even get a draw here, it will be a shock. But I think Arsenal just have too much here, psychologically, physically, in terms of getting results. This is an Arsenal side that believes in themselves. They know that even if they're down in the first minute, it's 89 minutes where they can score. So they don't have that surrender attitude in them. And you look at Manchester United and it's the direct opposite. They concede a single goal and it's as if disaster has just struck. I see no leaders in Manchester United. And that is a major, major problem. I think if United get one, Arsenal get three. If United don't get any, Arsenal get two. But regardless of what the scoreline will be, I think Arsenal end up winning this one by a two goal margin. I think they just have too much quality, too much chemistry, too much unity in the squad. But more overall, I think Arsenal have just too much determination here and they will not be undone by this Manchester United side. Hi, <laughs> uh, thank you for making it to the end of this video. Um, we really appreciate the watch time um, and the fact that you took some time out of your day to spend it with us talking about the sport that we all love. Um, if you enjoyed the content, why not, you know, drop a like down below or comment in the comment section. Um, maybe even consider subscribing to the channel. And I mean, while you are here right now, have a look at some of our old videos too. Um, they should be appearing on the screen right now along with that subscribe button. So you know exactly what to do. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. And have a great day out there. And we hope to see you again very, very soon. Thanks. Stay safe.